Hi everyone, I'd like to give you a little introduction to a pretty nifty internet resource called the TLG, or the Thesaurus Linguae Graecae. And I want to show you how you can use it to help in small ways and in big ways. So to begin, if you're within the Union uh, internet system, you can just do a search for the TLG and it may not be your first hit. It's mine because it's used to me. And you're going to see here the Thesaurus Linguae Graecae, that is the Thesaurus of the Greek language. And if you're logging in from within Union, you, can, you may have to make an account, but it's free. And if you're logging in from outside of Union, what you have to do is go to the library and then search for the TLG. It will be here as one of the databases that you can search. And then you give your Columbia credentials, since we share the Columbia Library System. And then you access your Thesaurus Linguae Graecae account. And if you don't have one, you'll have to make one at that point. But again, it's free. You just give them your information. So either go in through Columbia and search for TLG, or uh, if you're like in the dorms or something, just log in through TLG. Okay. Now, from here, there is home, about, and full corpus. Everything interesting is going to happen in full corpus. Then, the default will be uh, home canon text search. We're going to mess around with text search and you can explore other things later. Having clicked on text search, you have options to do a simple search or a proximity search. Proximity will let you look for two words nearby each other, which is really neat because you can see where expressions occur but this is just our first time, our intro. So we're gonna do a simple search. And then we have three options, a word index, which will show you like all the different forms of a certain verb or something. A lemma, which lets you search for a verb in its most basic form, and it will show you all the uses of that verb. So let's say, pistuo to believe, it'll show you aorist uses and future uses and so on and so forth but we're going to start with a textual search and a textual search will be a dumb search in the sense that it is really going to pay attention letter by letter um, it's not going to recognize what words are it's just going to search for a string of letters and what i'm going to do is from our homework we're reading luke 2 i'm just cutting and pasting uh, the first words of Luke 2 verse 1. You can cut and paste them from an online Bible or from the PDF I shared with you. And it came to pass in those days that it went out, that is, a decree went out. Let's see what happens if we just do a textual search for where that string of letters occurs. Hopefully it'll only be one place and that'll be Evangelium Luke. Hey, how about that? First hit is the Gospel Secundum Lucam, the Gospel according to Luke. And there it is. Um, other, by the way, other hits from, it, my hits come up chronologically. A later hit will be someone quoting that passage. So here's the church uh, historian Eusebius quoting this passage as Lucas writes and so on. Anyway, all right. So here we have only a couple, only a little bit of Luke that you can see. Already you'll notice that as I hover over any word, it gets underlined. And that's very exciting because if you click on one of those words, it's going to parse it and give you options to look it up in a lexicon. But before I show you that from here, when it identifies a work, so we're looking at the New Testament, a religious text, the Gospel according to Luke, and it has a number. Anyway, if if you click on this arrow, go to browser, I don't really know what that arrow is supposed to mean. What it will do is open that text in your main browser. 
So now we can see multiple verses from chapter 2. And you could just go on and scroll down to look for the next chapter, the next chapter or verse. Um, and so here's our text of Luke. If you'd like to display a little bit more, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to mess around with. You could say, I want to see 40 lines at a time. Fill up my page, please. There we go. We're all the way to verse 11. Okay. Now, let's say you're looking at this, and it came to pass in those days, a dogma went forth from Caesar Augustus. I don't know what apographus thy means, or I don't know how to parse it. I click on that word, and over on the right, I get the word form I'm searching, the lemma, that is the dictionary form, possible analyses, because sometimes a particular uh, conjugated form could be more than one thing. And here we go. It's a verb. It's the present infinitive, and it's middle or passive, all the terminology we've been using. And then you can look up in these different lexicons the meaning of the word. Now, some of these lexicons, uh, the TLG won't give you full access. So let me show you the, the most important ones. The best New Testament lexicon is Bauer. Um, I usually refer to that as B-D-A-G because it's Bauer, Darn, Arndt, and Gingrich. I can't remember who all the names are of the different people who helped edit after Bauer. But it's just called Bauer's Lexicon. If we click the plus sign here, you're not going to get a full dictionary entry. You're not going to learn much, but you do get something you might care most about when you're doing your homework, and that is a basic gloss, a basic quick definition. It means to enter a list or to register. So we come back here and we say, oh, a decree went forth to register. All right. Um, the two other dictionaries that are worth knowing about, Lampy did the patristic dictionary. This is a really great lexicon for early Christian writings, um, sort of just after the New Testament and through the sixth or seventh century. It's such a wealth of information. Anyway, likewise with Lampy, you don't get a full thing. Enter a list, enroll, be assessed for taxation. Lampy is going to give any meanings that were new in the early uh, in the in the early empire. So in the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh century, early Byzantine period. That's a nice thing about Lampy is because words change their meaning, right? So Lampy is a little bit chronologically subsequent to Bauer. Okay, the real money here is LSJ, Liddell, Scott, and Jones. This is the major classical dictionary. And when you click on LSJ, the TLG, this, what, this uh, database, gives you a full entry. So apographo, to write off, to copy, and in the middle, to have something copied. And it's going to be more information than you really want sometimes, but if you're really curious about a word, you're writing an exegesis paper, you're preparing a sermon, it's really cool because you're going to get, oh, they're going to give kind of chronologically entries. Herodotus used it, and Plato used it in his laws, and you can look at the expressions. They're going to be in Greek. They're not usually going to be translated, but hey, you know Greek, so that's no problem. In the passive, to be registered. Well, that's pretty much what we think the, what it means in this. So it looks like the meanings are pretty similar in older classical Greek as they are in the Koine Greek. In the middle voice, to register. Also in the middle, to register oneself. That's exactly what we're looking at. And the Eleusinians, blah, 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 they, they were being registered. Um, you're going to get a metaphorical usage to subscribe to, so like to subscribe to my sect. And that's kind of interesting as an attic law term, to enter a person's name for the purpose of accusing them, that is to enter them on like a to copy a charge against them, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to care. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get so carried away with this entry. I'm going to go back in my cursor now and just remind you what we did. All right, I'm going to go back again. So 
we did a text search. Word indexed, lemma, or textual search. If what you want is just help translating something, like a chapter of Mark, you go textual search, you enter a little bit of the text. So I'm gonna copy something else from Luke, paste it, and go, and that's it. And if you do a textual search, you're usually gonna get and only get the exact text you're interested in seeing displayed. And that's gonna get you a fully grammatically tagged text uh, for basically, they have all Greek, just about all Greek literature from Homer in the 8th century BCE through the Byzantine period. They have stuff as late as the 17th century, actually. And from there, you can just start reading. And, oh, what's on what's Anabe? I can't remember. There you go. Oh, it's from Anabino to go up. It's a verb. It's aorist. It's indicative. It's active. It's third person singular. So I hope you find that really helpful. Um, there are other ways to get this information. This is not as good for New Testament or Septuagint as good Bible software is, but the advantage is you can look up a lot of other things. And I'll uh, give you another link for an example of some proximity searches I did for another class if you want to play around, because you might just say like, wow, I want to know how often the word for um, census occurs with a numerical word. And you can search and see in Greek literature, how often do they talk about the first census and the second census? How often does this guy Quirinius get named? Um, blah, blah, blah. So it can be a lot of fun, either for something very simple or for something very powerful.